The right to enter and exit member states across Africa and move freely within them, coupled with the freedom to move goods unrestricted across the continent. These are seen as key drivers for boosting Africa's economic development. The implementation of measures to promote free movement can be considered as prudent practice and even fundamental elements to breaking down the barriers that have limited economic and social integration throughout the continent and sadly even weakened the spirit of Pan-Africanism. The path towards transformation of Africa into a free movement zone and removing prohibitive restrictions was first conceptualized in 1991 in the treaty establishing the African Economic Community, also referred to as the Abuja Treaty, which offered a founding framework for continental integration and set out key objectives for Africa's regional economic communities, including promotion of economic, social and cultural development, and the integration of African economies in order to increase economic self-reliance. Development, mobilization and utilization of the human and material resources of Africa in order to achieve a self-reliant development and promoting cooperation in all fields of human endeavor in order to raise the standard of living for Africans and enhance economic stability. The African Union's blueprint for the continent's social, political and economic development and integration enshrined in Agenda 2063 recognizes free movement as a key element in achieving the continent's development goals and aspirations by allowing Africans to travel, work and live within their own continent. Agenda 2063 Aspiration 2 outlines the role that an integrated continent will fulfill. And this initiative is further galvanized by the Free Movement of Persons Protocol, which specifies three rights which are necessary for the implementation of the goals of the Abuja Treaty. Namely, the right of entry, where African citizens shall have the right to enter, stay, move freely and exit the territory of an AU member state in accordance with the laws, regulations and procedures of the host country. The right of residence, where African citizens shall have the right of residence in the territory of any AU member state and the right of establishment, where African citizens shall have the right to set up in the territory of the host of any AU member state as a business, trade, profession or vocation or an economic activity as a self-employed person. The protocol on the free movement of people enables people to ensure that they are able to travel across Africa visa-free. That's the essence. It is also going to facilitate a right of residence and right of establishment. So giving the example of a business person from Lesotho, if they want to set up a business in Kenya, under the protocol, they would have every right. They can establish that. Uh, if somebody wants to uh, reside in another African country other than their country of origin, they have the right to do that. And then, most important, it is also going to facilitate a mutual recognition of professional qualifications. At the end of the day, your qualifications, if you are from Lesotho, should be able to be recognized in another African country. So those are the benefits that it offers. The commitment to Africans moving in their own continent is a top priority, therefore. It's the top priority. And this is why uh, the idea of free movement of persons then became one of the flagship projects of Agenda 2063 the Africa we want. You cannot talk of continental free trade agreement, goods and services, right, uh, moving uh, across borders without labor and business people. It doesn't make sense. It does not make sense. So that is why, therefore, the protocol that was signed, I think, in 2016, it's extremely important because it allows Africans to feel at home in their own continent. With the current exponential growth of Africa's youth population, 
The transformation of the continent into a prosperous, peaceful and integrated powerhouse can only become a tangible reality when the walls come down between member states and free movement for people and goods is implemented. As provided in the African continental free trade area, free movement between countries will require the harmonization of immigration and other laws, infrastructure and updated institutional practices, while also opening up commercial and job opportunities for Africa's youth, and thus contribute meaningly to the demographic dividend. In essence, free movement cannot and does not exist in a vacuum. The free movement paradigm also converges with other continental ambitions of integration across Africa today. Namely, promoting pan-African identity and social integration, promoting intra-African trade and commerce, incentivizing tourism and leisure travel from inter-African travelers, improving knowledge transfer and skill sharing, bolstering trans-border infrastructure and resources, facilitating labor, mobility and diversification, and improving legal protection and human rights for all citizens. These long-term benefits coupled with the legal safeguards contained in the African Union's Protocol on Free Movement of Persons will ensure protections for all nationals. We cannot have free trade without free movement. If we don't have free movement, how we can move goods? How uh, our citizens, our young people can move and have job opportunity and uh, to study? In, we have good universities. We have to go with free movement to allow our citizens to move in, in, within uh, our continent. I always imagine that the free movement we have in our economies now and the CFT and the free movement of services, if we have the opportunity of having the free movement of people linked to it, imagine that. It means more jobs it will be created in the continent. It means more opportunities for our young uh, people in Africa. It means more opportunities for skills development for these young generations. It means that they can have the opportunity to fulfill their aspiration within the continent. The Agenda 2063 flagship projects of the single African air transport market and the commodity strategy are inextricably linked to that of free movement on the continent. Moreover, the single African air transport market is predicated and reliant upon the ability and free movement of people to fly into one another's national airspace, while the commodity strategy will only be a viable framework if goods transported between member states are able to leave and arrive unhindered without interference between neighboring countries. These linkages illustrate the pivotal role that free movement will play in the sphere of not only political integration for Africa, but also its social and economic impact on the shifting demographic related to labor and other trends across the continent. The movement of capital, the movement of physical uh, technology, the movement of raw materials goes in tandem with the movement of people. The people will go and trade, the people will go to work. I'll give you a very good example is the marathon that is being produced in Rwanda. If we speak right now, Rwanda is struggling because of the coronavirus, because they are getting all the inputs from China. What if we are producing all the inputs from Africa? The Mara phone would be an African phone, completely. It's still an African phone by way of saying that the minerals come from Africa, but there is the, when you look at the rules of origin, those minerals go to China or other countries, they turn them into chips, into micro uh, other inputs, and they come back to Rwanda for assemblement. So we don't want to assemble. We want to have the whole integrated value, the whole value chain, that one country produces these minerals, another one produces chips, another one produces them. Then you come and produce a whole phone or a whole laptop, a whole computer, a whole... Electronics would be a very good example. I like to think of um, the Free Movement Protocol, the Joint Labour Migration uh, Program, the Single African Air Transport Market and the African uh, Continental Free Trade Agreement as being four wheels of a vehicle. If one of those wheels does not move right, 
the vehicle will poss possibly grind to a halt or perhaps just not move as smoothly. And we encourage in our discussions with um, member states as well as with the AUC, we encourage them to look at them as going hand in hand. And this is particularly important in the context of free movement. We know that African member states oftentimes are mimicking the same fears around migration that we see in the West. Um, there's all of those misperceptions about labour migrants coming in to take our jobs. Um, and yet we know that that is abundantly not the case. So we try and promote that understanding that as much as there is excitement around the AFCFTA, the goods will not move if the people cannot move. And we know this from global statistics. If you look at some of the regions that have the highest inter-regional uh, trade, um, they are the regions that have inter-regional mobility. Africa remains the least integrated of all world regions and that is slowing down Africa's economic um, growth. So we're working very hard again with the African Union Commission and the different departments to get them to look at the interconnections between all of these various um, AU initiatives so that no, none of them is allowed to lag behind because if it does, uh, the whole integration agenda will be held back. While 30 countries originally signed the Free Movement Protocol in 2018, ratification and formalization of the agreement via legal instruments is still pending by many member states. So what are some of the issues holding back member states from full ratification? And how legitimate are these concerns? I think that we need to also pay attention to our land borders because our land borders is where a lot of um, a lot of, the, if you like, commerce, informal commercial activities go on. There is a bit of neglect in the sense that um, if you are concerned about the security of your border, then definitely the start point should definitely be the community living there. If the community across the other border has more facility than the other, uh, the, you find that there will be this movement and you find that people will now st start struggling either for water or for uh, markets and so on and so forth. And then this kind of brings clashes and these clashes makes, uh, you know, makes governments hesitate to see the benefits of this free movement. People have fear of the economic impact, people have fear about uh, security, what, uh, what will be the security implications of people coming into our territory. There isn't um, uh, uh, the comfort level that there ought to be regarding um, where other countries are in terms of their civil registry systems, which are very weak um, in most countries on the continent, it has to be said. So governments will get comfortable with the idea of opening up to free movement if there are robust systems in place across the continent in terms of civil registry systems so that whoever turns up at your border with a passport uh, can really, uh, you can have the confidence that this person is indeed who they say they are. I should add that free movement doesn't mean um, 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 zero border controls. If anything, free movement implies ever more robust controls at borders. So this is something we still need to emphasize that um, in an age of free movement, we need to um, support countries to ensure they have the capacities for ever more robust border controls, but with a different posture, with a posture of facilitation rather than impeding. Because again, the vast majority of intra-African movements are bona fide movements. They should be facilitated, not impeded. Examples of other regional integration projects and free movement practices are also offered by partners of the African Union, sharing knowledge, advocacy and formal channels to deliver best practices for the continent's own integration agenda. We always like to say that we are very close partner of the African Union. We even use the word strategic. And we like to be the best partner of the African Union um, for the simple reason that it is a project that obviously echoes very much what we are trying to do in Europe in terms of integration. 
is uh, these are two unions, there are two institutions behind uh, these two unions who work in terms of promoting collaborations as a form of progress in, in their own field but also worldwide. So for us is, uh, is, uh, is, is more than working with, with a partner, is working with a partner who has very much a DNA that resembles a little bit ours. We believe very much that development of Africa will progress because of integration and this is why we like to call it a partnership because it's something where there is something for both of us uh, in terms of opportunities but also in terms of establishing and strengthening models, models of integration and looking also at the future of creating a digital market for Europe and a digital market for Africa so, and the single aviation market of course. So all the freedoms that, that a single market brings in working in these areas where we can provide support, technical assistance, but most importantly we can share our experience in this endeavour. The adoption and implementation of the African Free Movement Protocol together with the African Continental Free Trade Area carries tremendous potential to boost economic growth and promote social development in line with the Pan-African Agenda 2063. When implemented properly and in line with the interests and rights of migrants, states and employers alike, the abolition of visa requirements and the right of residence will help boosting productive labour mobility, ensuring that the enormous human talent available in Africa can truly benefit the whole continent. In the EU we have witnessed the remarkable benefits of free movement and free trade including lower unemployment rates, more commercial activities and increased cross-border trade and tourism. I'm confident that in Africa, free movement as part of the broader free trade agenda shall herald a new chapter in the progressive development of the continent. The free movement protocol, as part of the broader free movement agenda, aims to cater to interests of all African populations, to protect human rights and give opportunities to different groups, from students, entrepreneurs, traders, laborers, tourists and investors, to the receiving communities. As such, the protocol is an essential component of Africa's ambitious agenda 2063. If we solve the issue of uh, free movement, creating job opportunities, you creating uh, a, 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 a tourism in Africa and moving in Africa, we won't have our migrant uh, going outside. And uh, that um, make uh, our, some partner to help us to keep our citizen in Africa and uh, it gave me occasion to appeal to them to help us to sensitize because we need a, a strong person to handle the issue of free movement to sensitize our member state telling them don't be afraid we have more benefit having free movement than challenges and uh, we, we, we are working with our partners and we need the support of all partners to assist us to have a, a free movement to be a reality in Africa. Translating the pragmatic goals of interconnected travel, trade and free movement also frequently require another common but equally important denominator, the African passport. The production and issuance of the African passport mandated by the African Union is intended to ease travel within the continent by exempting holders from needing entry visas at any of Africa's borders. From its launch in 2016, the African passport has remained a crucible of the integration agenda for the continent, while also being one of the flagship projects of Agenda 2063, along with the Free Movement Protocol and the AFCFTA. Another common underreported fact in the midst of recent vilifying migrant reports emanating from Europe, is that the majority of African migration is into Africa. That is, the majority of travel by Africans for labor, business or leisure is actually from one African country to another African country. The African passport, when synthesized with the expansion of the free trade area, along with inherited labor and settlement rights in neighboring countries, could also dissipate the demand for dangerous and illegal migratory routes. We want our young generations to have the opportunities they are looking for within the continent. Then if they want to migrate, they can migrate, but our advice for them is just do it through legal corridors. Look for legal pathways for migration. Don't go risking your life, don't be exploited by human 
uh, trafficking networks, uh, don't risk your life ending up at the bottom of the Mediterranean or dying in the Sahara Desert. No, look for legal channels. But first, look for your opportunity at home. But it's not only for the, for the young people to look, it's for us as governments to create this atmosphere. Travelling freely on the continent with the African passport is a crucial asset for promoting labour mobility, investment and skills sharing between neighbouring member states. In addition, the elimination of travel barriers also requires individual countries to affect and implement open visa regimes, policies that in turn will accelerate AFCFTA initiatives and other free movement principles. With increased global movement, Concerns have been raised about the risk caused by health crises and necessitated subsequent emergency measures that impact the movement of persons as countries implement stricter controls to prohibit entry and even temporarily closing borders. Within a regionally integrated regimen, such as the Free Movement Protocol, African countries can benefit from knowledge systems, tracking cross-border movements of persons, promoting knowledge and sharing necessary data or cross-border collaboration for the management of health processes and allocation of resources to support member states. The uh, Americans, the Europeans, predominantly, they move easier than us as Africans in our own continent. Now, this protocol is trying to redress that. We are saying to AU member states, as part of implementing the roadmap of the protocol, first, relax visas. Relax visas and allow citizens to move. The African passport will restore equilibrium in access to continental ports of entry for all African travelers adding much needed momentum and symmetry to movement while enhancing the integration agenda of the continent. The Free Movement Protocol, the AFCFTA and the African Passport form a comprehensive and cohesive structure for continental integration. And while linked, each are political, economic and social drivers in their own right. The barriers to free movement across the continent are now outweighed by the opportunities and commitment by member states to affirming the interconnectivity of Africa in all spheres and for all its citizens. What we're also working with the African Union to do is to change the misperceptions around migration, to change the false narratives around migration, especially African migration. And we hope that with time, when migration is better understood, um, uh, countries that right now see it as a threat will embrace it as the opportunity that it is, again, if well managed. So changing the narrative is another important aspect that, of our work that will have to um, uh, be reinforced going forward if free movement is to become the reality that we need for it to be.